I locked away the worst version of me. What I didn't know is that the best version of me was in the cage too. My name is Coach Bruce, and I'm a life coach for ADHD parents. And I am personally on a journey right now to find all of me. 22 years ago, around, I made a decision to lock away the part of me that was filled with rage and anger and darkness and depression and sadness. I made this decision thinking it was going to be the best thing I could do to provide myself with a good life. I was a kid. I didn't understand how to handle this extreme emotion, this, ex this just guttural and visceral feeling that I had whenever I would get hurt emotionally, I would fly into a, just the deepest of rages or depressions, sadness. And I thought hiding that, getting rid of it, disconnecting from it was the best thing I could possibly do to live a better life. And as a kid, I made that decision. I separated myself from that. I locked that person away and didn't look back. I would later go on to get on Adderall and further sedate, further disconnect from my ability to emote. And that decision that I made so many years before became an afterthought to the point it wasn't even a thought at all. And I continued on in my life hearing things like, you don't really get excited, do you? And is that really, that's, that's all you feel about that? And fighting with my wife, having just, just the most intense arguments, at least on her side, with her screaming at me because she just wanted me to do do or say something, to feel something. She would push me to the very edge because she was tired of being married to an automaton. I mean, I could feel that that monster that I'd locked away is fucking strong. So whenever the cage got shaken enough, he would break out. And he would show himself by punching holes in walls, breaking down doors, denting cars, breaking phones. And then after he made me feel stupid enough, he'd go back into his cage. And I would say, well, that was weird. Because I would disconnect again from that emotion. I would learn nothing. It would happen and it would recede. Nothing gained. Property damage lost. Nobody hurt, thank God. But he was so powerful whenever he came out that I was terrified and I continued to hide from him. What I didn't realize until yesterday I started to, to step upon this revelation, but it didn't really come out until this morning as I was writing in my stack that whenever I locked the worst version of me away, I locked away the best version too. All these years I've been living without the darkness, but I've been living without the light. Whenever I cut off access to my deepest pain, I cut off access to the deepest pleasure. I've wasted 20 years not feeling everything. I've gone through the births of children, weddings, deaths, without feeling the full range of human emotion. And it's fucking heartbreaking. It's something that I'm dealing with and I'm going to continue dealing with. And I want to be a whole person. So I've gone off my medication. Today is day one. So no, uh, you know, effect yet. I've got, you know, things in place to make sure I don't go off the rails. I've got a plan, which I've never had. And I've got confidence that I can do it, which I've never had. I've been afraid to go off of this medication for 20 fucking years because I've been terrified of that monster. But now I see that in order to let the, the best version of me out, I have to deal with that monster. I can't just lock him away anymore. I have to learn how to process those deep emotions, how to have those angry feelings 
and process them in a healthy way. And that's, you know, it's, it's a big challenge. I want to say it's scary. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still realizing, I'm still reeling from the fact that for the last 20 years, I've just been describing the idea of emotions. I've been the LaCroix of feelings, just a whisper of anger, just a hint. And I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to process when the fog lifts and I'm able to really access what it's like to feel again. I know what's coming. I'm prepared for it. I have systems in place, but I'm still, I'm still apprehensive. I feel like apprehensive is something that I can be. It doesn't really involve a whole lot of feeling. It's more of a mental process. Got those mental processes down, but I want to feel. And I know that there are other people out there who want to feel as well. And they have found a way to throw their monster in the cage and ignore it. So they can live a comfortable life. A life without conflict, without disaster, without excitement without purpose. You can't have one without dealing with the other. And so I encourage you, if you have been living that zombie life, just throw a, throw a me too in the comment. Like, engage with me in the comment section and let me know that I'm not alone in this. Like, I'm not afraid to do it alone. I don't give a shit. But I think it helps other people to see that there are other people struggling with living their life to the fullest, with being complete human beings, especially in the ADHD parenthood, it is hard to feel those intense feelings and feel like you can still manage life. It can all feel like so much, but with the right help, with the right systems in place, you can access both. You can learn how to manage the anger and live for purpose, feel full gratitude. That's the, that's the thing that I'm the most disappointed slash excited for is that I've missed out on so much opportunity to be grateful because I didn't really have connection to the feeling of, of great, like a gratefulness. Like that's crazy. It's crazy to say, but as I'm learning to visualize and do meditation, everybody that I've listened to says the opposite of anxiety is being grateful. And so as I'm reaching for these feelings of gratefulness and I can't actually grasp them, I'm realizing that the problem with being successful in this type of path is that you have to fully be able to reach the whole range of emotions. You can't fucking block anything out. You cannot be a zombie and get to the higher level of being you. You have to deal with the prob the problem or the problematic emotions. And you have to learn how to utilize the useful ones. I didn't know how to do either because I didn't have one and I was terrified of the other. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm excited to get on this journey. You know, I probably am expecting to start feeling emotions in three to five days, like really start freaking out. Not really. I think it's going to go well, but follow along. Get in the comments. Have a conversation with me. Has anybody else been through this? Has anybody else gone off of long-term ADHD medication? I would love to hear what your experiences are like. Please jump in the comments. Talk to me. Let me know what's going on. And if you are wondering if this has been you, if you have been living an ADHD aimless life, grab the assessment in my comment section or in the description. Go take the assessment because I didn't realize that my life was so aimless until I started doing the work. So maybe other people might not either. So that assessment will help you figure it out. That is it for today. I'll see you tomorrow.